What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Watch and Listen podcast. This is a podcast all about watches that I do with my friend Cameron Weiss, the CEO of the Weiss Watch Company, making watches from scratch right here in Los Angeles, California. I'm Matt Farah, and I don't know nothing about watches. I'm just kidding. I'm learning. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by Crown & Caliber, the number one place to buy a secondhand luxury watch on the internet. And unless you happen to be one of the select lucky few that can get stainless steel Rolex and Paddocks at Sticker, you only want to buy a luxury watch secondhand. Crown & Caliber has over 2,000 watches in stock at any given time, and if they don't have it, I assure you, they can help you find it. Their trained staff of technicians uh, can help service any watch before it goes out, and they offer a limited mechanical warranty so that you know the watch you buy is going to work as expected. We've got a new uh, discount code for the show, code WL150. That's WL150 gets you $150 off your first watch purchase at Watch and Listen. Code WL150 at checkout. And, of course, if you live anywhere outside of Georgia, there's no sales tax either, which is a bonus from buying watches online. Don't go to Craigslist or eBay for a watch. It's just going to be shady. Crown & Caliber's got you covered. We're also brought to you by Beeline Coffee. It is delicious. The beans come from the finest coffee-producing regions of the globe. Uh, my roast, the roasted tire formulated perfectly for me. People who've tried it tell me it's some of the best coffee they've ever had. I think it's the best coffee I've ever had. Cameron's got his own roast as well, the Weiss Watch Company roast. It is delicious. And you can use code CHRONO, that's C-H-R-O-N-O, code CHRONO, to get you 15% off your entire order, big or small, subscription or individual, at Beeline Coffee. BeelineCoffee.com, code CHRONO for that deal. Support the folks who support the Watch and Listen podcast. Um, On this episode, this is going to be really interesting. In studio today, we've got Carol Bashand. Uh, This guy is crazy. He's only 24 years old. He has worked at NASA, and now he has his own a watch company called Barrel Hand Timepieces. And here's a guy who in college discovered the brand Yervork, uh, which which really makes non-traditional watches. And from just some pictures on the internet uh, and an exploded view of the parts in the movement, he literally made an, a, an exact working replica of a your work. And that's in college. Uh, and now he's got his own watch he's made that he's brought to show us. And I mean, this is a really, really impressive story. I hope you guys find this dude as interesting as I do, because I found this conversation fascinating. Uh, it's Carol Bashand uh, of, of Barrel Hand Watches on the Watch and Listen podcast. The podcast, and I was rolling the dice on a Friday afternoon because, I don't know if you guys see, you boys see the signs on the doors, they're going to start doing construction next door, oh, and we're about to oh be boy. rolling the dice every episode. What's happening, <laughs> folks? Welcome to the show. Cameron Vice. hello. Hello, how are you? In your Subaru Outback today? Yeah, I know. I went modern. 20, <laughs> 2019 Subaru Outback? Yeah. <laughs> it, you, how's air conditioning for you? Is it it's working good? It's amazing. <laughs> Dual climate control. Yes. Oh, and yeah. uh, let's welcome to the studio Karel Bashand. Welcome. Did I say, did How's I nail that one? Yeah, the last name? Yeah. Karel Bashand. <laughs> there it is. Of Barrel Hand Timepieces. Uh, follow this fool on Instagram. He's got an interesting, really fucking cool watch he brought in. And <laughs> uh, you're about doing in house complications. Yeah. And making weird watches. Yeah. I like that. Making <laughs> weird watches is perfect. Not the traditional stuff, for sure. No. And I pulled up a series of weird watches that I Googled earlier. And I'm sure you guys are going to. F- throw a bunch more in there uh what is it about the non-traditional timepiece uh i feel like a lot of it is just we've gotten to a point where you're almost wearing it as a mechanical sculpture so it's to me watchmaking became not just a utility but like a way to do these crazy kinetic sculptures and there's not really a lot of design constraints so Uh, like on a car you build a car but it has to be uh, it has to have airbags yeah, it has, it has to, to, to be like there's so many design constraints that by the end of it you can never get 
your concept car in real life for production. Yeah. But with watches, I mean, you could go make the craziest thing and there's not really a reason for it. It's just because it looks cool. Crazy for crazy. Just for sake. fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, on the other end of it, like I've noticed uh, like uh, like Breitling and like three companies basically just came out with the exact same watch. Like yeah. three companies just came out with the Omega Speedmaster coaxial. <laughs> like it's just the same. Like the indices are a little different in the hand, but it's basically like dial, chronograph, date, window on the bottom, yeah. It, right? Yeah, and like, then they'll they're all the charge same. Charge them a bunch. Yeah, too. and they're all the same. It's all like oh, seventy seven fifty. Yay! Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's so, not a lot of innovation going yeah. on. Right. A lot of that's good for like a core collection, but when you start getting up into this stuff. It's it's like the guy that collects something odd, something totally different. I think. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not yeah. pushing the in envelope at all. Yeah, right. It's you, very niche. Yeah, you're not gonna make like ten thousand of these. You know, it's like you could. You yeah, but there's not really necessarily clients like there is a mass market Rolex or something like that. Understand yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I, it, it makes me think of like Leno's garage and like the <laughs> weird stuff that he has the in there. I think yeah. the watch guy has that would have something like this would have. A well, pretty my friend, uh, my friend Myron Vernis, uh, in who's uh, who's got a great Instagram. I highly recommend following. It's Junkman three fifty six. This guy exclusively collects weird shit that no one's ever heard of, and he has he had Leno over to his garage recently to and he he let Leno drive two cars that Jay Leno had never even heard of before. Wow. <laughs> this is one. It's called a Hoffman. X1, I think, or Hoffman X... Oh, X8. And this has a... Curl, you're into cars, right? You must be into cars yeah, also. Yeah. So you've heard of a V engine, right? Yeah, Inline yeah. engine, a V engine, yeah. a flat engine. This is an X engine. It's literally pistons arranged in the shape <laughs> of an X. And in case you're wondering if that's a good design, no, it's not. It doesn't work very <laughs> well at all. A bunch. But it's, it's unique. Yeah, but it's yeah, different yeah, and it's weird. Different. And so... <laughs> so that's that's what you end up. My friend Myron's yeah. car collection's rad, but I totally can understand why you would want to have watches that don't even look like normal watches. Yeah, like, it yeah. makes sense. Step outside the box. It's like yeah, concept it's not like cars. Like, a yeah, bit. and like everyone wants to feel like they're in the future. Yeah, like, yeah. But if the future is just Apple watches for everybody, like that's not fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> a sad future. Yeah, it's yeah. a sad future. Like I want to see like the mechanical. Like oh, who's the guy? H. R. Geiger. Isn't that what I'm talking about? Uh, isn't isn't Geiger the guy who made uh, like Jonathan Davis's microphone stand? Uh, oh, I don't know. know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? H.R. Geiger's sculptures. Get, yeah, he's a. I mean, <laughs> first off, you look at that's this a guy. Right this, there. Is, this is <laughs> the kind of guy you guy. want talking about your future, right? But <laughs> if it's chops. like these are the oh, artwork. Yeah, yeah, I've yep. seen right. Stuff. It's like real post-apocalyptic yeah, stuff. Watch. Does he have a watch? Oh, is yeah, this it here? Yeah, it's like some weird sculpture thing. There it is. Strom Ag <laughs> Agonium H.R. Geiger. Exclusive wow. time pieces. That's uh, quite the case. That's yeah. weird as hell, right? <laughs> but like John Davis microphone. He, uh, you, you guys like corn? <laughs> Have I've you ever listened to, to corn? A little bit. So, I like, remember corn. If you remember corn, this is John Davis's. Oh, boy. Where do we go here? Is wow. This it? John Davis had funky. this microphone stand made by H.R. Geiger that looks like this. That's really some crazy. You know, Some kind of like alien lady. Yeah, it's yeah, like right? singing yeah. to an alien, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not a good resolution. But he had a he had a series of them that were all like this, which is pretty wow. cool. Like your, you know, I feel like your watch is kind of going down. It's that. different. Yeah, for sure. like it's like singing into. And it's the... only going to appeal to a certain amount of people. Right, right, right. So uh, niche, crazy, fucking weird watches. What uh, what's your background, Karel? Uh, so I just graduated recently, mechanical engineer. So uh -huh. that's so how old are you? Been... I'm 24. Wow. Starting <laughs> young like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's good to find what you like early. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And the reason I got into watches, uh, so when I was 18, I was kind of, I was a freshman in college and I was looking through YouTube videos and they had a video of like an exploded view of the Erwerk 202. That's this watch. Yeah. Yeah. And I had, I had no idea what high end watches were. I just saw this thing and it was like, an engineer's wet dream like that thing was crazy out of the box yeah wait so this has like this central axis right yeah with three so it's got rotating barrels yeah and then the back end kind of recalibrates the barrels so as it ends the cycle it'll rotate over three times 
to bring in the new hour. So you see in the back, there's like the 11 and 2. Yeah, back here. So that's right. going to flip to 8 o'clock next. So this this spins to 8 while it's on the other side. Yeah. So that by the time it gets to this 0. Yeah, so when it gets to 760, it's 8 0 at the other end. That is really cool. So really nuts. I had never seen anything like it. So right away, I was like, man, I got to own one of these. Let me see if I can get a better and exploded view. I had no idea what an expensive watch was how much is one yeah, of those so you things? call in and they're like 75 so, grand yeah so i was looking <laughs> online i was like to me an expensive watch was like 500 bucks like i had no mm. idea what a high-end watch really was and then i find these and they're like the price of a house really yeah they started at like 200k at the time i'm trying to find them oh here we go here's so, here's uh, all the parts little yeah. backstory my first uh job in the watch industry was actually at a watch retailer, and I sold one of these to a guy uh, who see. saw it in a magazine. He had no idea about watches either. He just called in on the cool. phone, <laughs> and he was like, this, this, uh, this watch from this ad, what is that, and how do I buy it? And I sold it to him. It was $75,000. It was an Urmer. <laughs> Crazy. And he just walked in, just bought over it. The, over, over the phone. phone. Oh, so over those the are phone. the ones that I built. Wait, where? Uh, so that one that you're hovering Here? over. Yeah, so that's one that I... Recreate. You built this? Yeah. So Wait I a built minute. That one. Hold up. 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 <laughs> so this is kind of so, going down the rabbit hole of airwork. Uh, this. I apologize for the resolution because I zoomed <laughs> way on this picture, folks. So that is not an airwork. That is one, one you made. Yeah. By reverse engineering yeah, an airwork. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> That's so, so crazy. So when I found out the retail price, I was like, "All right, well, fuck. I'm not owning that anytime soon. How can I go about?" Uh, so like you didn't start by like learning. modding Seikos or anything. You started by <laughs> no, reverse I went, engineering. I went over? down the rabbit hole on the wow. airwork. Wait, and, so uh, here's the. Wait, where's the uh, the the real one? Here's the real one. Yeah. And then here's yours. Yeah. So that's a rough prototype. It's since improved a little bit, but Dude, yeah, that's it gives you an awesome. idea. Awesome. That's really close to the <laughs> actual thing. And then it's mechanically functional, so it does the same complications and everything. It's just not to the same finishing standards that they're able to achieve because I'm not a classically trained watchmaker. Is this the first watch you ever made? Yeah, so that was the Holy first shit. watch Do I ever made. Do they just made. hand you an engineering degree and just go, <laughs> like, you're done now, and that's it? So I started that freshman year, and then initially the idea was just to recreate all the parts in CAD on my computer, so like do all the 3D modeling, basically. So I spent a year going piece by piece, recreating all the parts in the watch and uh there's no blueprints of it online obviously and i didn't have one to like reference so i just started compiling like hundreds of pictures that i could find on google image yeah like side angle top angle yeah and then i knew the overall dimensions of the watch so with that i was able to make like a ratio of scale for all the other dimensions so proportionally it's pretty much exactly the same my cad to their cad um so after a year of finishing up all that, I was like, well, damn, I have all the parts. I might as well try to like produce just one just to kind of like learn the manufacturing process. And so that kind of got me into the 3D printing world because there was no way I could have machined that on a college student budget. Yeah. So you 3D printed it all. So the first, so it took about a year and then this was the eighth prototype, but it was all 3D printed over each prototype just to kind of get the mechanism working, making sure all the fit and what like functionality fuck? was good. And then is there a basic movement under that? And then there's a, yeah. a module that yeah, goes yeah, on top. Yeah, exactly. And is the Urvork one that also? They kind of do that. Yeah. Movement? So they have uh, some of their early watches. They were using like base movements, and then they add a couple plates, and then they build their module on top of it. And then, because uh, you don't want to recreate the whole balance wheel, like all the gear trains, like that's that's a lot of work. If you can use like a base engine and then kind of work off that, it simplifies things a little bit. Dude, that's so rad. <laughs> Thanks. You don't have you don't have one of those. Do I you? know. I should have brought it. I'm working on it right now. Oh, I'm wow. updating a couple parts to it. Have you? Has anyone at Urbork seen this? So I published an article about the watch, uh, and then. Like, not even a week after I got contacted by Erwerk. Threatening to sue yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Were they really? Was, no, no. I, th <laughs> I thought it was going to be like a cease and desist or something. Uh, but they were really cool. They saw that I was just some kid that was like a huge fanboy of their watches, basically. And they knew that I was just doing it 
to kind of honor their watches and learn what they were doing. And they were kind enough to fly me out to Switzerland to meet with them. Oh, so really? I, I brought the prototype and then we sat and we kind of like compared like their actual airwork that they had versus yeah. this one. So proportionally very similar, but obviously finishes they're like, Oh, did they show you how to make like crazy awesome finishes? No, no, <laughs> they didn't do anything like that. It was That's more because so cool, a lot right? of this is still 3D printed, so you can't get like the same level of finishing you really need. Yeah, it's some... like if it starts out kind of rough, yeah, you got to so... remove a lot of material. To yeah, make it... yeah. Are these all yours? All of these are mine, yeah. Is this yours too? Yeah, that's like a render I did. Oh, that's a re Okay, wait, I'm trying to find... But the loom shot in the front is this mine. This one? And then the wrist shot's mine wow, too. Wow, that's yours, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, look so, at this. I didn't do the loom. I basically found people across oh, the U.S. Is... to kind of help out with this project because there's only so much you can do on your own. Wow, there's that's a lot of... amazing. <laughs> Thanks. People who make shit are fucking awesome. <laughs> and this is your these are your rendering? Yeah, that's a render. So that's Whoa. the difficulty with this project was figuring out the internals because you can get a reference of like the side shot and a top view of the watch, but getting the mechanism, there's no like pictures of the internals. Wow. So oh, it took a lot of work to figure out the tolerances and how the mechanism works properly. So I heard um so a guy I know made a desk clock based on their module oh, really? kind of in a similar way that's awesome uh he was looking through the youtube video and when they explode the parts he would freeze it yeah yeah and then he'd grab like a <laughs> screenshot and then he would go through so he'd have multiple angles of all of the parts yeah wow and with multiple angles of those parts he can trace their geometry and multiple angles you can create a 3d drawing so he created the the cad uh all the CAD work for the module That's awesome. to make a desk clock version of that. that I would love really to see that. Rad. That's super yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of. Is there any pictures of it? You think if I can find? Yeah, it? I would um, love to see that. I don't think there's any pictures. He didn't like do anything publicly. Okay. I have some of the parts at my workshop. Oh, I so would love to see the, that. The desk clock. That's sick. I don't know. I don't see anything. I no, see anything I don't think he was posting anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you keep that to yourself? What a bitch. <laughs> right. He's, well, he's he's not a watch guy at all. He, he wasn't a watch like guy. He, was just, guy. he saw that engineer guy and was wow. totally enthralled by it. Yeah. And same thing, just kind of reverse awesome. engineered, but wanted to do a, a big so version. So he stopped it like frame by frame just to kind of break it exactly. down. Exactly. Yeah. So he had multiple angles. That's cool. Wow. So, all right. So you make this this crazy replica of this artwork that yeah. is substantially similar to the real <laughs> thing. And then what? So it was a one-off. There was no intention. I didn't want to like, profit off of this in any way it was just to learn from these guys and i just wanted to learn every little detail about the watch so i was happy that they saw it that way because i think if i had recreated like a patek or rolex <laughs> i would have just gotten the cease and desist right yeah. away it wouldn't have been or you would have same. gotten a call from someone in china like hey yeah yeah so it wouldn't <laughs> have been the same vibe at all but for airwork to understand kind of the mindset that i was going into it with they were super like i mean it was an honor to meet them these guys were like my idols and the fact that they thought my project was cool was like it really like meant a lot to me and yeah so they kind of are the ones that inspired me to end up doing my own company while i was out there because we had talked about doing like internships and maybe working on like other projects in the future and then ultimately they told me you know if you're really passionate about watchmaking, you should try doing your own thing because you have all the creative freedom instead of like whoever you work for, whether it's Airwork, MBNF, like these are all awesome companies. But at the end of the day, you're going to be doing a small segment yeah. of someone else's idea. That's what I, you know, I, I wanted to design cars when I was a kid yeah. and I got, I had some friends and family that were in the industry and they were all like, oh, you need to be a mechanical engineer. And no one told me Mechanical engineers design fucking parts yeah. for big things that right. other creative people design. Yeah, yeah like so you're I making be a subsystem. Yeah, I wanted to be Jay Mays or not or like Harley Earl. I didn't want to design a fucking camshaft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I wanted to draw the car. Like, and I got some bad advice. <laughs> and ended up going a year or two down that road the wrong way. Yeah, at yeah. least someone at Urwork was like, "Hey, no, do you?" Do you yeah, should, they do were you super should... cool. They yeah. were super friendly. I mean, just the fact that they were kind enough to fly me out and meet me. Like That's I was right. like 19, 20 at the time. Like I was still in college. Had you been college. to Switzerland before? No, no. I'd never Stealth, really like right? traveled outside the U.S. So it was all 
pretty new to me. What is the Urwerk factory like? Uh, this was during their watch event, the AH, uh, SIHH. Oh, okay. So it's cool. like all the independent brands get together and they show off their new pieces. So this was more like a... It was the trade show. Yeah, it was like a trade yeah. show. Well, that's basically. actually probably pretty cool to visit. They don't have Yeah, I got to their... see all their pieces. I had never seen a single Urwerk in person until that day where I got to see their entire collection. So that blew my mind. That's crazy that you've <laughs> never actually seen one in person. Yeah. Oh, is that there? That's the thing, huh? Is that how this that works? That one's the that's 110. A different one, yeah. different that's the, model, okay. but similar uh, mechanism. That's a, wait, that's a they neat... They all do kind of wandering hour uh, stuff. That one's sick. Yeah, that's a neat kind of exploded view. God, this shit's dope. It's crazy. <laughs> so they go, okay, you should probably start your own thing. Yeah. And you just did. Well, as soon as... I mean, they were very like welcoming, and the way that they treated me... I mean, they had clients to meet. They had a lot of like business meetings to do while I was there. But I mean, they spent like two or three hours a day just sitting and like talking with me and kind of going over the watch. So I felt like, I mean, I think from their perspective, they saw that I was just geeking out over every little detail and to have someone kind of go through every little component of the watch and like find all the attention to detail that they put through kind of makes, it makes them feel happy too in a way because they get to see like someone appreciate every little part yeah that i guess they most went people through. are like the guy cameron sold yeah. one to is like, like hey that like, looks like cool it looks yeah yeah, let me, yeah. Get, let me get one of those yeah yeah that's wild so it was great so they really motivated me and as soon as i got on the flight back i was like sketching things i was like trying to come up with something what the next thing is what the next <laughs> thing is and it yeah. took a while but that's what i brought that's in what today this is? yeah should we get, should we just go to that yeah, yeah. this is what you well, brought in today yeah which is real cool looking. <laughs> Thanks. Still a rough prototype. So but does this, it work? Yeah, yeah. Functional. It keeps time. I was wearing it driving over here. So what? what is it? So it's a couple of things. It's a jump hour mechanism at the top uh, using a Geneva gear. And then a linear cam path minute system that I developed. So basically the minutes go up and down kind of like a thermometer. So it starts at zero at the top scrolls down to 30 and then rolls back up to 60 at the end and then at the end of the cycle the hour jumps over oh so wait but how so do you know how do you know down? if it's 10 yeah, or yeah. 50 so the way that i do that is there's a little magnifier at the bottom right we're gonna make yeah so we're gonna make that a little bit bigger but basically there's a color that is indicated so you have like the left side zero to 30 is black for instance and the right side is white so you have two different colors, and then the magnifier is going to highlight whichever color. So, so it'll turn black or white? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, uh, the final model will be, like, orange and white, where I have a client that wants red and blue color. So that way, it's just easy to differentiate between the 0 to 30 and the 30 to 60. Wow. This is a scratch design. Yeah, yeah. So every part on that watch, except for the movement and the screws, is all custom designed and manufactured. That's pretty fucking cool. Right? <laughs> What's the basic movement? So it's based off... Uh, initially, I started with the ETA, but they just have a lot of like uh, supplier issues that I was having. So I ended up going with Eterna for this one uh, just because the Eterna was a little bit more compact so I could fit it into the case. I think we um, have some other... Here's some, we have some other pictures of, your, uh, of yeah. your development of it. Yeah, so I try to document as much as I can of the process whose delorean collection <laughs> that was at a car show problem with going to car shows in a group of deloreans it's you know a bunch of the same shit yeah yeah <laughs> all your cars are the same they all got their um, back to the future gear in there i do you gotta <laughs> listen trust me i know you yeah, gotta yeah. keep your back to the future shit and your delorean shit very separate it's yeah, not yeah. it's not cool <laughs> although the world will combine the two for you yeah no yeah <laughs> So this is just all, is these all 3D printed uh, yep. uh, parts? Yeah, exactly. So basically I start with the base of Turner. It's a module 39. Uh, you kind of see it in that one. That's in here. Yeah, yeah, you can case. see it through the back. So it's manual line movement. It's got about 60 hours of power reserve. Uh, it's been keeping really good time. It's got a lot of torque, which is good for my module. And uh, what I do is I take that base movement and then I basically build a module that sits on top of it. So you could think of it as the movement being the engine and then adding. So you get the reliability of a proven engine and then you kind of add on your own time display complications to it. 
That's really cool. And so how are you how are you using 3D printing to save you time and money? So the whole process, I mean, this one that you're seeing here, that's three years in and about that's the 31st prototype. So if I had manufactured all of those, well, one, I couldn't even do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to me, being able to 3D print all these prototypes, this is the first prototype that's in metal because everything's been finalized. So the case is in metal. The internal components still so need to be So before it was like it was all plastic. Like yeah, this, yeah, right? exactly. And then even rougher as you go mm-hmm. back to one of the earliest prototypes. Whoa, that's a great animation there showing how the <laughs> hour, hour hand goes up. Yeah, the so that's the cam plate. So you have the little cam path and then the linear minute display has a little guide that sticks into the cam groove and then it guides it up and down kind of like a record player catching the groove. Oh, that's literally like an engine cam like lifting right? the valve yeah, up yeah, and exactly. down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same deal. That yeah. is fucking rad, dude. <laughs> well, so is that just attached to the uh, like that the cannon pinion or something? Yeah, yeah. So that goes. So I have like a post adapter for the the center pinion, and then I just add the cam plate on top, basically. So the cam lobe is basically a minute hand underneath yeah. Yeah, this yeah. hidden cover, mm-hmm. and that that's fucking so yeah. Cool. And then that's also like your whole dial is rotating throughout the day. Yeah. So you get kind of like a different pattern. So oh, yeah. so you can just use the movement, l- the motion of the movement to, to spin drive a your different, yep. yeah. Cool. I mean, it's like a dr- it's like the drive shaft. You know, you can always yeah. hook whatever yeah, you want yeah, into yeah. the drive shaft. Yeah, you yeah. could you could run a gearbox or you could run a fucking blender on an LS. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like. Yeah, so you just add on a module great, and then dude. you have to do a lot of calculations to make sure there's constant torque going through the movement. You don't want anything snagging, obviously, and you don't want too much force draining the power reserve so there's a lot of tweaking that has to go on which is why it takes 30 prototypes to do but yeah and there's one in lego yeah wait, they, wait so what is this? so this is a little test rig that i built to simulate wear on the movement so uh, you literally built it out of lego this yeah, is a lego yeah, yeah. thing that just spins the so it spins the crown so every 24 seconds is equivalent to a day okay so you could test about 10 years of simulated wear on the module within like uh, within one day for instance so instead of just hoping that my module is robust i can do all the vibration analysis all the engineering stuff they teach you but at the end of the day you need to do like physical tests yeah so this is a way to test and you're uh, just testing it on a plastic one yeah yeah so this one survived is the the movement and stuff metal inside the plastic case or is the whole thing 3d so, printed plastic so the whole module right now on this one most of the module components are 3d printed the geneva gears metal uh the geneva gears brass the hour wheels aluminum and then the little guide is on steel rails and then it's a hard anodized aluminum piece to reduce weight that's sliding up and down Bro, this is crazy. <laughs> this is awesome. No one does this. This is the coolest thing ever. Like, so no one little, just starts at this. So it's a little DIY way of testing the the movement reliability, basically, for the module. Cameron, how crazy is this fool? Right? It's nuts. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, like we're, like, because Cameron, you know, and went to watchmaking school and, you know. And, but and I make ma- simple stuff. And you make a, a, tradi- <laughs> a traditional watch. Yeah. You know, the fact yeah. that you make your own movement is amazing. But it's it's fundamentally it's a minute seconds you know it's a right. standard movement. But there's limitations yeah. to what I can do with this. Like I don't have any of the watchmaking background to really bring it into final production with all the proper finishes and stuff and making sure everything is good to go. So it's like having the engineering background is one thing, but part of what makes a total watch is having the engineering and watchmaking experience to create a final product. You need a whole team. There's a lot of infrastructure that goes into making one watch. Right. So yeah. are you capable of making a production watch, or are you just going to so be this making is, prototypes indefinitely? No, no. So this is 80% done. So the case uh, is machined, but there's no finishes on it. Uh, it's just basic like machining finishes. And then the internal components, there's still a couple left. So the cam plate, I'm getting machined. Um, basically... I have three or four more parts to get machined. And then once I finalize those quotes with my suppliers, I'll have all the metal pieces, basically a pre-production prototype. And then uh, I'll be sending it to a couple watchmakers to do all the finishes, final tests. 
and then we'll do a production of 10 to 20 pieces. Wow. What are you going to sell that thing for? Uh, this one, so based on the current quotes, uh, there's still like three parts that I have to finalize quotes on, but it's probably going to be around 25 to 30K US. Wow. Can I try it on? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. This thing is so rad, dude. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. It's really heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's got some heft to it. Yeah. But it fits pretty comfortable. So I had like a curved case back that kind of conforms to the wrist. And then the lugs are, lug distance is pretty 40 wild, to 40. Right? Looks, it's, it, it's, it's girthy. Yeah, it's yeah. Got a, it's got <laughs> some girth to it. But it's, it's that's Doesn't really. Doesn't blend in. <laughs> no, it's really intense though. Thanks. Who makes the strap for it? Uh, so that's uh, a woman out of Arizona. So she does all the the custom strap for me. Cause that's cool. I can't get that off the shelf either. Yeah. So she sources uh, American bison leather. And it's then, nice and soft. Yeah, and then the back is lined with Alcantara, and then she hand stitches all of it together. Well, look at, like, yeah, look at that. Try to put right? that on, Cam. It's fucking cool. And then you'll see on the, the could you make it part, a Could you make a titanium case? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the plan. Right now, I don't have the budget to do, right. like, a production of 10 in titanium, but uh, ultimately, these are so, like, small production that it's going to be made to order with the client. So I have a couple clients that have specified like what colors they want. Uh -huh. uh, you can customize some of the laser centered pieces. Are all uh, your, are all your suppliers in America? Right now the case is manufactured. Pretty much everything is here in the U S. So my idea with this project was, I mean, there's so many talented people across the U S there's just no infrastructure to connect everyone uh, within the watchmaking industry. And I knew that those talented people existed. It was just a matter of finding and sourcing all these parts. So it's taken a long time, but I'm getting pretty close to all the machine p components on that watch right now are from the U.S. Uh, the direct metal laser centered components, which is a type of 3D printed steel. Uh, those come from Germany just because it's... Which, what are, I'm sorry, what are those? So is the, that this? the lugs and the top plate. Yeah. So I, that's this little plate. Yeah. Here? Yeah. So that's a pretty interesting new technology. That's the kind of stuff SpaceX is doing. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's he's wearing the SpaceX yeah. secret room. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what is that? So it's a type of, you could call it 3d printing, but it, it's a, a way of manufacturing steel without machining it. So what they do is they start with, uh, really fine steel powder so you could Im imagine like almost like flour mm -hmm. it's super fine and it's all this granulated steel powder they lay it in a bed and then they have a high powered laser that sits on top of it and wherever it hits the powder it targets and solidifies it basically mm. welds the powder sounds together. like toner on a laser jet printer yeah actually. yeah so it's it's a similar concept but you're you're building parts up wow. so you start with one layer you center all of that and it basically welds a flat piece and then you pour more powder over it and then you keep stacking up and you get a full 3d printed part out of steel or even titanium so like these that parts is so i brought some in cool. so you guys oh can you see. have some parts yeah, oh great yeah. throw them under the camera yeah let's see this is so cool what who are other than urvark what other kind of inspirations do you have behind this stuff uh spacex is super cool uh, MBNF, basically Go anyone ahead. that's doing stuff Where's out my... of the ordinary and trying to use innovative new materials and technologies. Uh, I feel well, here's, like here's watchmaking. This, this crazy Harry Winston thing. Yeah, that yeah. thing's nuts. That thing is wild. Because don't these like these become numbers? They appear. In the middle, yeah, yeah. Right? all of a sudden all they just together. appear. They just appear in the middle. And so like... it's like totally unnecessary, but <laughs> super cool. Wait, where's this This thing I saw, this Christophe Claret awesome. thing? Have you seen this yeah, before? The yeah, ball So the, these balls on either side just They're move like up and mag down. Lev. Is it magnets? Yeah, or is it's it, magnets. It's magnets? Yeah, so I don't know how that doesn't disrupt the movement, but I guess they have the balance wheel far away enough from it's, the magnets. That dude, it's some not... of this shit is so crazy. It's crazy. And like someone has to explain to me how this... I hate Hublot. I think yeah, that thing is. This is the Hublot La Ferrari that looks like you're kind of looking down at a car engine. Yeah. Do you know how this works, Cameron? Oh, I have no idea how it works, but <laughs> yeah. uh, you've got your time over on the sides here. And then the whole center. The is whole center the, spins, right? Yeah, it's like yeah a those are like the barrels. Yeah. So those hold the power reserve. So it's like you have like 10 different mainspring barrels in, in parallel. So they're all driving one another. So that's how you get like a hundred days of power. Oh, reserve. does this have a hundred days of power some reserve? Like, some, some crazy, crazy like power that. reserve yeah. number. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I like this one. I pulled this up. This is the Meister yeah, the Singer, but it's the Jump Hour that Meister Singer, sick. which it's, I actually it's think more is really like cool. a subtle, but it's a cool time yeah. display. Well, some of these weird ones. This one, Ulysse Nardin <laughs> goes really off the wall sometimes. Some yachting stuff. Yeah, but so <laughs> this one has winches. Yeah. That pull cables that move the minute hand back and forth like the mast and boom of his fucking sailboat. It's nuts. Like uh, the chain drive stuff yeah, and the winch the, driven stuff really is cool. so crazy. I wonder how long that stuff will last. It's oh like my God. Floss the warranty on this yeah. thing is probably 30 days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's got to be some kind of special uh, wire that is just, it won't stretch like out, it won't fray. Something. I don't know, so maybe crazy. some kind of like EDM stuff, yeah. EDM yeah. wire or something. Nice. And then here's like, this is like a cheap, a fairly cheap one. This is just kind of Japanese design sort of thing. It's just like basically yeah, fuel yeah. gauges that just go up and they're retrograde. Yeah. Some fun stuff. The Lang, the Zeitwerk, that Minute Repeater. Cool. Yeah, like the uh, the sort of jumping hour stuff. And then our friend, you know, our friend John Ward with his Icon Doozy watch yeah. has that too. Jump hour. <laughs> oh, wait, with same as the uh, the IWC Paul Weber. Yeah, clean. I like yeah. those. These are pretty neat. Yeah. Although once you hear the word bathroom scale, you can't. Yeah, you yeah. Can't on, you can't. Fifties <laughs> bathroom here. scale for sure. Oh wait, so we've got these parts. So so this is how. Yeah. Um, so that's direct metal laser centering. Let me. I'm gonna actually try so, to zoom way in on this. Hold on. Don't move it too much, Cameron. You can see, so you could those lines you can see is is the movement of yeah, the laser. Yeah. So the that's resolution. the print layer. So each line represents one layer. So they center a layer spread some new powder on top and then center another layer so you get so it's not a brush finish it's really just straight out of the printer you get this stacking of the layers That's so cool. and the resolution the reason i'm using this company in germany is like just because they do some of the best like this is the state of the art for direct metal laser centering right now and i've been working with them we've been doing research on how you can optimize the technology uh -huh. so the print resolution for this like is usually around 0.1 millimeters so you can imagine you're printing a little cube that's like 0.1 millimeters by 0.1 millimeters here wait cameron put put this next to that for reference just for scale because i'm zoomed like so far in i it's think it's small it's really small so like so just put like this yeah so that that yeah, part you go. we're so getting that's how small this thing is <laughs> So the I'm print not just resolution showing off on my this. new Explorer, yeah. by the way. My black dial is <laughs> yeah. good. I got the white dial and the black dial. There you go. Why not? Because <laughs> I'm an asshole, that's why. But yeah, that's that's a small piece. And so the so, negative space, is it easier to do it that way than to take so, a block and mill it out or something? So it's part of the process when we were refining. So we're getting to a point now where this print re resolution that we're getting on this part is about 20 microns. So it's 0 0.02 millimeters of like print resolution. Okay. So it's it's about as good as it gets uh, for this technology, and that involves refining the temperatures that you print at, uh, the orientation that you print the part at. Is it uh, is it is it crazy expensive? You know, this one? It's yeah, not as expensive as you'd think. It's really? actually cheaper to. 3D print in steel than it was to manufacture this in steel. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. some of these parts would be like crazy expensive to to actually machine to machine really? would be really yeah. tough and on this part specifically there's like a hexagonal pattern on it that would be pretty much impossible, impossible yeah. to machine just because yeah, wait, of the corners so that you me, get in there what else can we put for scale do we have anything else that's, i'm gonna stick my finger in there your finger, yeah, so <laughs> right it's like zoom, the size of my index finger zoom way way you in. can it's, see my horrible nails your nails look really good camera don't sell <laughs> yourself short that's a, that's a really small hexagonal right? cut yeah, yeah it's tiny. so it's not just for aesthetics. The reason we did th did that is we've been doing a lot of research in how you can optimize uh, direct metal laser centering. And what we were getting, uh, you'll see the other plate that has no holes in it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at that closely, you'll actually see it's it, it warps a little bit. It's pretty small, but basically it warps to the point where you can't use it as a functional part. And the reason for that is you're getting... A lot of heat introduced into the system mm. so as it's printing i mean it's high powered lasers that are welding steel together so you're getting a uh, cold part on yeah the exactly and so, hot on the top yeah so as curl. it's building the heat is not being distributed evenly so you're getting a lot of heat build up and it just warps the part as it's printing so what i developed is uh just testing out a bunch of different heat sinks built into the part so that as it's printing 
it's dissipating the heat evenly and you get really nice clean parts. So the one that you have here, uh, that hexagonal pattern is a specific heat sink for that part so that as it's printing, it prints very evenly and you don't get any of the warping. Oh, so the fact that it looks cool is just a, side, it looks, bo it's a yeah. side bonus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now pull the watch back under there so we can see that part yeah as as applied to watch i mean it really does add to the aesthetic Kinda of the watch it. too I yeah mean, i think sure. if it was just solid it's it's fortuitous that yeah it needed yeah because if it was let's lay the lay the solid one just over there gently that one versus the full no the full solid one because oh, the, the full so solid yeah because yeah, yeah. the solid one straight up just doesn't look as cool right, right? No, yeah for sure so it, it looks adds simple. an aesthetic feature and yeah. then it's also it adds a story to the watch in a way like, yeah i think a lot of people that buy these kind of unique time display complications, they're doing it because they want a story behind it. They, it's almost like a a talking point. And so yeah. when you add these little details, it kind of adds to the story of the watch. And I mean, just this part alone, you could talk about for an hour if you really wanted to, you know? Yeah. So I what I wanted to do specifically, the reason it's the top plate is... I wanted to incorporate this technology in the watch, but I thought it'd be really cool to incorporate it in the actual like module mechanism. Cause if you can, if you can put this technology in a functional way, I think you're showcasing how, how far it's come and that yeah. what it's capable of to people, an extent. People always ask us if we do any 3d printing and I'm always, I tell them no, it just, the stuff it's not in the U S like it's yeah. not there yet unless mm. you're SpaceX. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it just isn't there for for reference. Our movement is it parts, because the the hardware technology isn't there, or the people who can operate I mean, it, it's it aren't a, it's there. Multiple it, things it's you probably know more because you've yeah. been through it. But as far as I've found, like we machine movement parts down to about five microns, like them tiny the little screws, That's the right? Yeah, you need. so yeah. tiny little parts, really tight your, tolerances. You had a post the other day of your tiny little screws. Here they yeah, are. Yeah, so like yeah, tiny, so these are these pallet things, forks. These, these so, tiny little pallet forks. So, so like nuts. you could try to 3D print those. You wouldn't be able to do that. But the problem is the um, Richard, you had some like the size of the laser beam too. and the resolution of everything that you people do in the US, you can't get such tight tolerances. Yeah. Um, but you were saying you got down to 20 microns, 20 microns what these parts are. So that's not that bad. If you design the whole movement to be able to accept, or at least your parts, yeah, to it's be able, to, be handle able that, to handle it, that 20 micron, uh, band for your tolerance, then you're okay. And you can actually put it in the movement, which is unbelievable. That's so, so, so cool. that's the idea behind it is instead of just having aesthetic pieces, cause you'll see it on the back of the watch too, all the lug components, the buckle is laser centered. Um, those, I mean, you get really good resolution and they're not, I mean, that's a crown release system. So that is a functional part, I guess, but I want to actually, is, what is that thing? How does that work? So if you were to flick the switch, push it all the way over. Yeah. You can push it with those tongs as hard as you want. Just push it all the way to the end. That'll pop the crown out. Oh, cool. So now so you, do can, you have, any, do you have any water resistance on this watch? Yeah. So not like diving, five, but five ATM. Okay. Yeah. If you're diving with this, I don't know that it's no, going to no. hold up to but it. You could, <laughs> but if you washed your hands or you yeah, went yeah, in the shower, you could, you'd be enough right. that you can go through your day and not have to think oh, about it. Oh, that's good. It. That's good. Yeah. Basic water resistance yeah. is key. So that whole uh, mechanism is 3D printed steel. So that's another like functional DMLS part. But I wanted to actually incorporate it in the module because I felt that that was a nice way of showcasing the technology. And I think watchmaking in general is like a cool platform where you can test out all these weird technologies. And it's it's a good proving ground because if you can do these kind of tolerances with this technology, you can pretty much apply it to anything. You could scale it up to something much yeah, larger. Yeah. And Because watchmaking is kind of like pushing the limits on every aspect. Yeah. Another cool thing with the with using the lasers you can actually make hollow parts if you need something super lightweight. Yeah. You could center around. So kind of like in this part here. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to this machine one, that. You can't really. machine that part because inside there's actually geometry inside all of those parallelograms. Yeah, and if you flip it on the other side, you'll see it as well. It's a little bit Let's more complex see. on that. Yeah, see right in there? Oh, yeah, because you've got, yeah. You so see those, inside there's yeah. more geometry. You could not machine this part. It just wouldn't be possible. Yeah. And so those are heat sinks specific for that part. So each part had to be designed to have specific heat sinks depending on how it was warping and the orientations being built. This is zoomed way. Yeah, right? it's a small yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See my finger there? Yeah. 
That's so Tiny. cool. Thanks. How interesting. <laughs> That's crazy. So where do you go from here? Other than finishing this watch and making yeah. your your 10 or your 20, yeah, yeah. you know, what's the next thing? So the plan with this project is it was never going to be too big of a production. It's To me, this is almost like a research platform. It was a way to establish infrastructure here in the U.S. or as many suppliers as I could to build an entire watch and then also test emerging technologies, test out the DMLS uh, materials, and then just testing how to build a module on top of a base movement. So it served as a great research platform, and those 10, 20 pieces are basically just going to be a research project that you're, you're purchasing, and it's this research that I'm doing is going to allow me to do somewhat simpler uh, slightly less expensive watches that would be a larger production of say like 100 units where it's not the crazy time displays or not necessarily as complex as this one but you get the same kind of technology packed into a watch just not the same price point that so this is like you know if you were relating to tesla they come out with their really expensive models first right and then their model three is more of the mass production but it's still incorporating the technology that they gained from the first couple uh, projects is this your is this this the rendering, little teaser yeah, rendering yeah. Animation? <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea of how it's going to look when it's all done some of the components have changed i mean it's really it looks especially the finished uh you know in the finished uh colors there it really does look like a uh, a luxury item yeah, it should look pretty good when it's all said and done. It's, it's, it resets right at the wrong time. I just want to have to show this. <laughs> if you go picture. on the website, you can see a pretty solid oh, render yeah? of okay. what the final one will look like. We bring it up for you. So that's what oh, it should look like when it's all done. That's real cool, man. That's <laughs> really cool. Thanks. And so this little bit down here will flip back and forth from yeah. white to orange in yeah, this case? Yeah, exactly. So, so is that what's going on out here? Yeah, exactly. It'll, keep, so it'll it's continually a run and then oh, flip to white. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So it's a so ring. Do, that yeah. moves, is the, does it move in yeah, that Yeah, yeah, you can play with that one. Oh, okay. The crown should be popped out, too, so you oh, can mess okay. around with it. So I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize that that was how... Is it disengaged? Yeah. I didn't realize that that was how it happened. So you can see here. Oh, yeah. See that? There it is. So, it'll... so the magnifier I still need to install, but basically it's going to highlight the color as it sh- as it goes in. That is cool. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. Wow. And then here's the, the jump. The jump. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks. That's great, man. How neat is it's that? Coming together. That's unbelievable. So do you have... A dr- do you have drawings are in your mind for the next piece or yeah have you, it, yeah i what? got a project coming in yeah uh, that i've been working on i'm just waiting to finish this one before i uh, what's start. the time frame on finishing this one you think so this one uh i mean it's just finalizing quotes with those last three parts basically whatever's still 3d printed plastic in there that still needs to be machined and then doing finishes and then just testing the shit out of it making sure everything's good to go before uh doing production so I'm guessing uh, we're going to have the rest of the components in in the next two months. And then from there, it's going to be finishes and testing for about a year to make sure everything's good to go. And then we'll be doing uh, reservations and launching the watch. That is so... Is this your full-time gig? No, no. What's your day gig? <laughs> also engineering related. Oh, okay, cool. used to work at uh, NASA doing research there. Oh, and nice then, resume. <laughs> <laughs> But this takes up a lot of my time for sure. Yeah, I, I bet all the testing and everything. Have you yeah. consulted with anyone in Urwork about this one? Uh, yeah, yeah. So they've seen the process. They've kind of they comment on it every once in a while. That's and, cool, uh, man. I help them out finding like a three D printer for them for their prototypes as well. Oh, really? Yeah. What's is it? At what point can you start doing your own three D printing instead of outsourcing it? Oof. I would like to do that pretty soon. So it's crazy how quickly the technology has changed i mean we're getting to a point where you could get like the print resolution in that watch uh for the plastic parts you could do you could get like a five thousand dollar printer really that's like desktop and it gets almost the same resolution of like 10 microns which is crazy for for prototypes it's perfect because you need it doesn't have to be perfect but you can test the mechanism you can test the fits and make sure everything's good to go and then you can reiterate a bunch without costing a fortune. And then when you're ready, then you can do a full metal prototype. 
because the reason that i mean it's still an expensive watch but you look at airwork or mbnf their watches could sell for six figures plus and obviously the manufacturing is pretty expensive but a lot of it is the r d where that could take yeah. up like 80 percent of your total cost so if yeah. you think about how long it takes to prototype let's say they their airwork 202 for instance i mean that probably took them three years to prototype develop and test and i mean you probably spent a million dollars in r d just to get the final piece so when you launch those watches of 100 units you need you to, to recoup that to, cost yeah. somehow well that's how bugatti you know the famous bugatti veyron you know they were selling them for two million dollars and you know the the the, the trope was that at, even at two million dollars they, they were making, losing money yeah yeah you know because they cost them seven to build and it wasn't yeah. seven there aren't seven million dollars in parts in the car right. but they spent yeah. five billion on the <laughs> r and d you yeah. know and they can never make it back right yeah you know, if same. you forget all the r and d costs yeah. it seems like they're making money but yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah they spent a lot to get into that business yeah, yeah yeah so the idea with this is really i mean my r and d costs have been close to nothing i mean just your each time. prototype it's just my time and so to me the r and d cost doesn't even go into like the final calculation it of the should. watch i mean it, it, it will really a little should. bit <laughs> yeah yeah for sure but the idea is what you're getting is a lot of value where you're paying for the manufacturing costs and the r d isn't like a huge chunk of that final price mm -hmm. point so instead of it being a six-figure watch you're able to do you know around 20 30k yeah um, i mean usually if you 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 normally would not be able to buy something that looks and works like this for twenty thousand bucks. Probably not. Yeah. yeah, I mean it just doesn't really happen. Yeah, <laughs> Cameron, can you supply him movements? <laughs> I'm serious. How does that happen? Maybe then you can. Then you could maybe you, could you do the same thing with a Weiss movement? And that there? would be cool. Yeah, I'm. Just, I mean, well, there's the Weiss a lot movement of... is similar to the movement that he started with. The really? ETA, yeah, yeah. The ETA movement. Yeah. Which so is a we super based our manufacturing movement. off of theirs. You could, you could you could possibly use that a wise cool. movement. Yeah, that would yeah. be very cool. <laughs> yeah. Then you yeah. could have mo even more America. Well, that's the idea. Is, like, is the Eterna American? It's not. No, right? no, no, they're Swiss. a Swiss company. Yeah, yeah. Swiss. You could get more America in there. <laughs> <laughs> would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. What about like carbon fiber and stuff? You f is there is there a reason to to start fucking with those types of materials? I mean, or you could. I feel like there's a lot of companies that do it already, and. I mean, if a client really wanted it, I'm sure we could work something out if it's tastefully done. <laughs> There's a lot of people that uh, overdo it on the carbon fiber. Yeah, I mean, it can look cheesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It can definitely look stupid. We yeah. we got a we got a watch in, in a show that we were showing off that had some carbon fiber. And yeah, it was yeah, really <laughs> terrible looking. But you know, you, it can be done right. Yeah, yeah. What are you wearing right now? Uh, this is a Airwork 103. Really? Let's yeah. see. Let's throw yeah, that in yeah. there. So you eventually did so you get found, your Airwork. You found a way to get an Airwork. This is super recent, yeah. Very good. Because I, I, I noticed when you walked up, I was like, that's that's a nice piece of hardware. This one looks like the Alien Communicator. I'm yeah, big, yeah. I'm a big fan of these. Ugh, we're still way zoomed in. So, yeah, this is one of my favorite you pieces need me to move of the, Airwork, uh, too. Wait, no, I just need to, need you to move it up further. Like, see, see how we're at the bottom? Yes. There we go. Thank you, Cameron. That's such a cool watch, man. Yeah, one of my favorite pieces of theirs, because uh, this was one of their first uh, watches that really made them who they are today. So to me, this is a landmark piece in modern urology, especially for unique time displays. I mean, this was in 2002. No one was doing anything crazy. Whoa, what is that? What's on the back? So they were the first to do this uh time indicator on the case back so it's basically you have your power reserve you have your minutes and your seconds so you can set the time more accurately because there's no seconds on the front oh. to keep it clean and then you also have a fine tuning indicator or not an indicator but you have like that little screw where you can fine tune the watch so if it's running a little slow or a little fast you can actually adjust it without having to go to a watchmaker really so that was a world first too for, for why do them. they sh everyone should do that it's pretty right? cool that's it's, it's like a watchmaker's yeah. nightmare though bro. <laughs> what, i mean i've never the, worked uh, on one of i these can't imagine the colin chapman line if you make the suspension adjustable expect them to adjust it wrong yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right amazing. so it's like most people won't know what they're doing but it's yeah. a cool little feature to add and yeah. I haven't really played Wait, around with it. Flip it back over. So if you try and flip it over from just from the front, it's a little more challenging to set. Is yeah. Why? Because there's well, no running seconds, seconds, and it's, so yeah. you couldn't yeah. have it exact. But you, it's still pretty precise down to the minute. 
Um, and so it's sort of a it's like a, a teacup ride thing, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. So this is right. their wandering hour that yeah. they kind of flagshipped. So the how reason do you, that how this do you read it. Um, so we, oh, this here, would between, be three. It's oh, it's exactly three o'clock. Yeah. So it's between the two and the yeah, three. Yeah. So as it scrolls, it'll scroll through all the minutes. So it's not actually hugely different from the two o two. Yeah, similar idea, and then that yeah. one has wandering hours, but they're like 3D instead. This one's Ooh. rotating on one axis, and the other rotates Oh, those are on barrels. A... Yeah, 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 and these are... Right, right, right. Cool. Wow. Yeah. How happy are you that you own a real one now? Isn't Man, that... this thing's crazy. It's like a dream watch. Have the... you taken it apart? No, no. <laughs> I'm not even going to try messing with that. The What I really like about this watch is they had... Uh, the 101 that they launched, so they started the company in 97, and the 101 was their first watch. wasn't a huge hit. They were still relatively unknown, uh, but it was kind of like, it was definitely That's, out of the ordinary. That is a weird-looking watch. Yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. Bring, up a be- bring up a good picture of this. So with this watch, they had finally, I mean, they had launched the brand, and... This is a strange-looking watch. Yeah, it's it's what, what, definitely different. Oh, is how does it? How do you read it? So what there's the? no exact minutes. So like this would be around ten forty. Okay, so you so can the, imagine the zero to sixty. S- yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like this abstract minimal <laughs> deal going on. I'm glad they moved past this. this yeah, is yeah. So they've been, <laughs> they've been definitely improved since. So the 103 was kind of their their next project, and they had about they had just enough money to make a couple watches in steel and they didn't know if it was going to be successful. So they were kind of putting all their money on the line that they gained from this to make the one Oh three, which is the watch you have here. And they didn't know if it was going to be a hit. And I mean, people just ate it up and it kind of brought our work to where they are today. How many of these do they make? This one, I think the white gold they made maybe like one fifty, mm-hmm. and then they have a rose gold that they did one fifty. Oh, is that white a, gold? Yeah. Oh wow, rad. And, and then also, they did, uh, is it heavy? you've got a, a little oh, guy. Uh, Jesus, it's really heavy. Yeah, it's wow. got some heft to it, That's but it really sits heavy. really Can nice I put it on, on the wrist. Yeah, mind? for sure, for sure. So a big part of their their um, success also had to do with West Time and John Simonian. Yeah, yeah. Kind of taking them, uh, t- bringing them to the U.S. and. And doing all the distribution and marketing and, and making sure that they actually that get their, their message out there and people can learn about them. They, uh, they sell them at Manfredi in Greenwich as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry at Manfredi is my homie. That is a crazy, crazy watch. <laughs> Very spaceship ass. Super spaceshipy, yeah. That's so cool, <laughs> man. What a nice piece. How, how, how rewarding to be able to buy one of these. Yeah, you know? super satisfying. That's awesome. And it's kind of... Uh, motivating in a way because this was the watch that made them or work essentially this is kind of their first thing that really brought them in the spotlight and so hopefully with this project uh, it'll be the first project of many to come can you give us a, a hint of what your next watch might look like yeah is there, is there some yeah, inspiration so somewhere the next watch is going to be pretty it's going to be more simple still the same kind of aesthetic that the first watch is but a little bit more reserved. And uh, I wanted to incorporate some new tech into it as well, so not just the direct metal laser centering, but uh, I'm working with some uh, program that uses AI for some of the parts. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what, is, so what, what does AI help you with in terms Each of... Each part some... will get smarter and better. <laughs> and... <laughs> so is... you could think about it as... Um, I don't know if you've ever seen... This company did a drone body using AI CAD. So no. they basically they gave the specifications of where the motors are for the drone, and then a drone designed by AI. Yeah, so that, Is that frame. This one here? Well, the frame, this? the third picture, kind of gives you an idea. But basically, Whoa. they gave specifications of where the motors go, and then where the the GPU and the like computer systems kind of sit, and then over. 10,000 iterations, the computer just randomly generated a bunch of different uh, CAD models right. and then tested it for its reliability, like its weak points, and it just keeps evolving and recreating until it improves on the design. Bro, fucking Skynet. This is not yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. Skynet making our shit for us is not good. So you, you know just, what they do this of... with? They do this with the CFD models. That's why like all supercars kind of look the same. 
because they go, it needs to have this amount of downforce and this amount of airflow to the mid end to the side pods radio. And that's why, like, the computer gets, figures out yeah. most of it. Yeah, the, and that's why, like, uh, you know, for same. instance, the new Hennessy Venom F5, um, uh, it looks a lot like a lot of other. Uh, uh, cars like there's a reason that this thing. Sick. Yeah, it looks it, it. It's it's almost by sheer luck that it's attractive because <laughs> they plugged in their goals. They want it to. It needs to flow this much air into the engine. It yeah. needs to make this much downforce and have this much drag and whatever. And the computer just spit out this. Yeah, spot th- on. Yeah. That's the same exact concept. So basically, yeah. I mean, AI ha- has a, this very like it's a loaded word nowadays. Everyone's using it, and like yeah, because we've seen fucking Terminator. Yeah, before. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the end of this yeah. story. <laughs> but so it's similar to this, where you're you're taking all the design constraints, throwing it into a computer, and then the computer generates a lot of different forms to try to create a part and i won't go into detail as to what wow, exactly it's developing but we're using some of that technology to make That's the next real watch crazy so will you come back and show us when you've got something oh, to show? for sure for sure that's fucking cool, man. Thank you for coming in and bringing <laughs> hey, that. Thanks that, for having that's me. Like I was really, stoked to come here. <laughs> really cool, man. That's I, I don't see people doing shit like this a lot. That's <laughs> wild. Cameron, you want to sell anything right now before we wrap this up? Uh, new 38 millimeters. Are you wearing it? I'm not wearing the brand new one, but We've got this is the black dial version. Black so. dial. Yeah. What are the new one? What's the new version? What color? So we've got a blue dial with silver hands, and we've also got a latte dial with skeletonized hands, and like a green dial hands. with the silver hands. Skeletonized hands are sweet. I'm a fan yeah. of that. That's clean. I love the Looking movie. Looking nice. Yeah. A little basic for this guy over here. Nah, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That thing's awesome. There's no I'm crazy telling you, satellite you should, disc, should, no AI. <laughs> you should try and get a Weiss movement and get a little more America into yeah, it. Yeah, so that'd be yeah. That would be fucking sweet. Wow. Well, uh, I don't have anything to promote. So I got I have a safari car sitting outside. I'm excited to go drive it. Yeah, it's the weekend. Awesome. Thanks for coming in. Corel Bashan of uh, of Barrel Hand Watches. Follow him on Instagram and uh, barrelhand.com. And I think uh, is there's an email contact if you uh, yeah that's it if it's you want to support if you want to reserve or just check out the project if you want to support this dude financially I strongly <laughs> recommend that that's fucking some gangster shit man you want to plug anything else for get out of here that's it that's it barrelhand watches all right thanks guys that's watch and listen see you next week bye. <laughs>